Hello, welcome back. I haven't streamed in a little while because I've been super busy with um, Christmas, everything, work. Here is uh, an update to Project Browser. Um, so Project Browser, Browser version 0 0.2. So we're slowly progressing towards a one version, um, but this brings a bunch of, uh, a few changes that were requested by users and posted as issues, um, feature requests. So let's jump straight into them. The project browser can now view aliases so or show aliases. So I'm going to go to the settings and we'll just make sure this is turned on because it won't be turned on for you if you've already got the, the plugin. So go to project browser and just check this line here, use aliases, display the first alias of a file as its name in the project browser if available. Make sure that's turned on. So now this file is called advice for students considering an honors year. So if I go back, you can see that's that one there, but I've decided, you know, that's not, that's maybe my working title, uh, or, or maybe my title is like something to do with Zettelkasten where you've got something. I don't know how Zettelkast people use Zettelkasten in this way. Cause I don't use it in this way, but let's say it's something really, uh, weird like that. And you don't want it to appear like that. That was the example the person gave in the in the issue when they posted it. Um, so they requested, you know, what if it worked with aliases? So we can add aliases here, and this is a default Obsidian uh, feature. And if I add in advice for students considering an honors year and press enter, you can see that becomes its own alias. So now if I go back, you can see it appears as advice for students considering an honors year. So it uses that alias in place of using the title. Okay, so the next one, states can now be links. So if I go into this, you'll notice that this state now has a little hover. It's now a link uh, and that happens by default. If you've already got, again, if you've already got the plugin installed, then it won't be a link because you can turn this on or off. They're on by default if you install the plugin new because this feature's just come in, if you're already using the plugin, I haven't changed your links, so you have to turn them on. So, if I click into that, um, you can hopefully see if your screen's um, big enough, um, or if you zoom in, that this state is surrounded by two square brackets, so it's an internal link. If I open up the settings. Let's look at how to turn that on. So I'll go down to project browser and we'll see that nothing has really changed in here. But if I go into each state, I have an option now treat as link. So you write your state as normal. and then you turn on this button. Now, if you try and do it manually, so let's say I go idea, it'll turn that off for me. Um, but I'm gonna turn that off. So focus, um, let's turn that link off and click save state and go back. And you'll notice that um, even if I refresh this page, this is still a link because at the moment, the plugin doesn't change all your links for you. Uh, so um, all any you've already applied won't get changed. In the future, I'll implement that. But for now, um, you'd have to update that manually if you want them all to update. But if I change this state and I go to, let's go to drafting, see drafting has a link. If I go back to focus now, that's white because it doesn't have a link. What's the benefit of this? Well, now Obsidian knows what's linked to what state. So I can go to my graph view and now I see those states appear with everything that's linked to them. So now you can see I don't have many links in this particular vault. So um, the only links that are showing are the ones that are related to my states. So that's really handy because now the graph view is visible for that. It's done individually, 
because you might not want your archived and cancelled to link. You might not want them to appear in there. Um, so you can change that on a per state basis. So what's next? Toggling the state menu. So you can see we've got the state menu at the top there. Um, not everyone wants that state menu. So you can press Command Shift S is the default shortcut, but you can change that hotkey in the settings. So press Command Shift F at Command Shift S to toggle that on and off. Uh, and then you can hide these properties um, as you normally would, and you can just toggle that on and off. There's also a couple of other shortcuts. So if I press Command Shift D, it cycles the state to the next state. And Command Shift D again, cycles again. Or Command Shift A goes back. So I can go forward and back, and I can just keep going until it goes to the end. Or I can, uh, or I can yeah, stop where I want. So I think this was focus. Now if the state menu is closed, and you cycle, it's going to open, show you what it changes to, and then go back, and then close again. A couple more settings related to that is that you can set it to loop states. So if you turn on looping, then it won't stop at the end. You can just keep going around and around your states by clicking Command Shift D. Um, the setting for showing the state menu is also in here, but you can use that shortcut. It's probably a bit easier. Um, and were there any others? Uh, if you want to change those hotkeys, they are in the hotkey section. So project browser, and you'll see all the commands there, and you can change those. Those are the defaults, but you can change those. And that's it. So hopefully that um, helps a lot of people who are using this plugin. I think it certainly helps me. Those are really good suggestions by um, everyone who posted issues. I'm going to drop this plugin for a little bit um, for a few couple of weeks or a few weeks because I'm gonna I've got two weeks off work or the next week and a half off work, so my day job. So I'm gonna work exclusively on Ink for that period because I want to advance that plugin a bit further um, at the start of this year. So that's it. Um, hopefully, um, I've got an update for you soon for Ink. Um, but thanks for joining. See you later.